Good morning. Hello, my name is Oliver Schrödel. I'm a senior key expert for distribution automation system and application. Today, I will show you how can master distribution grid diversification with IoT. This talk is about the challenges we face in the distribution grid and therefore resulting in the demand of more sensor and analytics. But new measurements and alarms in the way we are used to will solve the problem or will not solve the problem we are having in now. A novel combination of new data acquisition combined with cloud-based analytics is pioneering the way forward. New load and increasing volatile renewable infeeds are pushing diversification of distribution grids. While parts of the grid are in idle, others are utilized on the limits. How we can handle that? Furthermore, the pressure on the existing infrastructure is increasing fast and in different directions. Due to the consumer and political demand, the energy system shall become greener and faster as possible. It is expected that distributed renewable energy resources will increase seven times until 2030. This will cause in a demand of handling so specific areas, e.g. with microgrids, which will result in a growth of these applications by 19%. At the same time, new volatile loads and new players will change the energy system. We can see those changes already. Because since 1965, renewables yearly growth and reached 15.5% by 2019. Also, the fleet of electrical cars reached 7.2 million in the same year. And finally, energy storages are deployed at a growth rate of 24%. The development of power grid capacity by old means with not, will not be keep pace with this diversification of the infeed, loads and new business demands due to the market players. This and the immense cost of grid expansions adapt those needs, results in an alternative strategy making power grid more energy intelligent. This is new. Now we have a look into the power transmission grid. There is the state of the art, which means nearly 100% is equipped with sensors and actors. Assets with high value and impact of failure, failures on a large areas are justifying the necessary invest for monitoring and control. It is even well proven concept and application. But the distribution grids are not equipped and monitored to that extent. Only 10% of the secondary substation have either monitoring or monitoring and control for medium voltage distribution. Low voltage distribution grid is totally blind. And so we have a new world on this area. So that means we have to connect more sensor to this level. So how are these kind of challenges and what can be the answer? A high number of uh, assets can be connected and we must have a technology which must scale on low cost. And we need plug and play IT solution for this scaling. Like the plug and play functionality you know from your um, printer. Where you connect a printer to your PC and automatically all drivers get be connected. So, how we can do this in future. So one way forward is the CCAM diagnostic suite of the CICAM navigator. And um, what are the technical principles for this? So we need a solution which is easy to be connected 
inside the grid. And on the left hand side we see the communication architecture on the station levels. So where we have different devices connected to the field level and via our SICAM A8000 this kind of data is later on brought to the cloud. So that means we have now new elements in the grid like the new fuses, the 4COM, which 3NA-COM honestly, which can be connected to our SICAM A8000 and provide the data to the mine sphere. And with no touch and zero touch onboarding and no engineering in the cloud, we can have a close overview on the SICAM navigator. That is the technical principle for the level of the secondary stations monitoring. But we have not only have the SICAM navigator, we have also the Cybertech dashboard, which has a similar need. So we like to have the data which is selected in a primary substation and will be also shipped to the cloud. So that means in this level we have a communication via IEC 6150 and by this kind of communication bus with the IEC 6150 we can connect our grid edge device. Our grid edge device can easily connect to the client sphere cloud and will bring all data via the IoT gateway, you see here, the SICAM edge device via MindSphere and have then also with a zero onboarding, no engineering efforts, the overview over the protection relays and the cloud. And just is it IoT, so no changes in the existing relays. So is it not only just old wine in new bottles? So how we can use now these kind of new functionality of IoT for these kind of applications. And I will give you some new and old challenges in the distribution grid on this. So what are the main drivers uh, for this IoT uh, information and, and, and applications in total? So for all, we have long fault and localization times by cable outages and all these kind of topics. Then we have equipment phase, where we have a breakdown from overhead lines or from transformers. And the next topic is the expensive grid expansion, cause of the new needs of the new loads, like the EV vehicles or the electronic vehicles and all these topics here. So that comes in line with, in, on the other hand side, of the renewable infeed. And new loads again with heat pumps and electronic vehicles. So that means we have a lot of new challenges to our old infrastructure which we can deal and tackle with IoT information. So what is the role of IoT in this kind of cloud-based application? And here's a very nice sample um, which brings it a little bit lively together. So because we have on the one hand side the SCADA application and on the other side the IoT application. And what are the split between IoT and SCADA application? And SCADA is still necessary for operation. So it's like our steering wheel where we can operate everything finely and nice and tune the total system in a total overview. But we have also the IoT, the simplified operation and maintenance, which is a kind of guidance on this kind of application, like an yeah, these kind of new applications which are downloaded to the cars, for example, with guided to the next parking lot and so on. So that's a driver assistance topic which helps you to fault and evaluate the system. So, in a nutshell, analytics for power grids helps to identify the grid constraints. It helps you also to handle grid disproportion and it identifying components at risks. So not even when the risk appears, so even in front. So it helps you to yeah, have the, the next level of maintenance and supervision of your grid. But what's next? What are the continuous DevOps and AI-based analytics? And I like to give you here four samples. And it's also quite nice because you see here also with these kind of data which we gather from the field level, from the substation level, we can do also then more applications and we can also run these applications 
in a next level. So even we can roll out this application quite fast and also adapt the application if we have new insights. For example, for grid load evaluation, which you see on the left hand side. Or we have root cause recognition, where we can also adapt different scenarios and finding finally the really the root cause of the problem. And also declare behavior to see about when change of the of the behavior was happening, for example, and what are the extent of these kind of change of behavior? Is it inside the limits or is it sometimes what we need to react on? And also some kind of fault propagation to figure out, okay, where we have the next faults, what are the next maintenance issues which we need to do and to handle. Finally, I'd like to come to a conclusion of the whole uh, summary, uh, conclusion and summary of our session today and uh, give you some insights what our conclusion on this is. So because we have built up a nice grid diagnostic suite, which helps you to navigate through the system, through the medium voltage system and even to the low voltage system. And it helps you to integrate large scale renewable integration and swarm loads like e-cars. Thanks to our cloud-based application of data analytics through medium voltage and low voltage distribution area, we can uni uh, unite complex fault situations, clever handle grid constraints up front, and turns also our grid behavior in a carbon dioxide reduction. So that is a little bit in a nutshell our ideas, what we have to bring together in our grid diagnostic suite, also to come to the next level of IoT applications. That was a summary of our small insights of this session. And uh, thanks a lot. And I'd like to hand back to Michaela. Oliver, thank you for jumping in on that. That was brilliant. <laughs> How to integrate the ADMS system with DERMS in a smart grid scenario in IoT perspective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's everything in it because good. So ADMS is Advanced Distribution Management exactly. System for all who know, don't know that. And then it's um, DERMS is something you can explain. It's Distributed Energy uh, Resource Management System. system something. Correct. Okay, and now you go with the oh, IoT perspective. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's perfect. So already we started to sort things out. So we have the ADMS system, the Advanced Distribution Management System, which helps us to have a closer look and to optimize our distribution grid for the distribution grid operator, for example. Then we have the DERM system, where we have a specific view on the yeah, distributed energy resources, honestly. So that are like the nice picture which we saw in the, in the slide deck with this kind of steering wheel, where somebody is really actively to drive the grid, to drive his car to the right side. And this is something like a must. So that's a, that is not an option which you can put it to the cloud or to cloud IoT services. But we have a topic here which is nicely here, which guides us a little bit to these kind of um, yeah, DMS and ADMS and DERMS topic. Because when we see about, okay, how good is our equipment in the field level? So what are the balances which we are already re reached, for example, or what are the actual loading situation on the different areas, for example, and what kind of equipment we have. That is a topic which we can share and match in the IoT perspective. And then we have both. We have on the one side, side this kind of really steering and driving the, the renewable infeeds, for example, to reduce the power infeed, for example, or to shift loads from one hand side to the another hand side, for example, to do these kind of active load management inside the grid. And we have on the other hand side the perspective, okay, how much of these kind of energy resources we are allowing to build <laughs> inside the grid that we are later be able to manage it in the ADMS system without getting it out of service. So that is a little bit the topic. So like we have both, both worlds. One is this kind of steering wheel. On the other is the, like the navigation. How is the next step? What should be done next? Thank you. And there's even one more question. Let's see if we can take that. Could you please describe the compatibility of the IEC 61850 95 
and your IoT technologies? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I can't tell you much in detail on this, honestly, because I'm not an expert in IEC 60150 and the new version of communication in here. Um, the topic is mainly that we use a standardized protocol, which is the MQTT protocol, for example, or our MindSphere connector. And this is something which is unique and can be used by everybody. And that is also why we don't use the IEC 60150 standard. So we use an open cloud-based standard because honestly, we will have also some devices which will not have an IC 60150 connection because it's still too expensive. <laughs> so that means, for example, you see this kind of nice transformer substation where we have very, let me say, budget device inside. <laughs> and that is the reason why we need also some protocols which can be also supported by these kind of devices which we have in the substation on the low voltage level. And that is the reason why we use these kind of MindSphere connector or the MQTT protocol. So that is a little bit the topic which from our perspective um, is from a greater perspective for a cloud-based application, um, yeah, more useful. Thank you. Thanks for the comprehensive answer. Thanks for the former question about the ADMS system. The, your answer was appreciated by <laughs> the nice um, participant from Saudi Electric. Thanks for that. That was interesting. I do have no more questions in the line right now. Thanks for the questions so far. Thank you for joining us right here. If questions come to your mind later, Oliver is on LinkedIn, Bruno is on LinkedIn, get in contact with them there. Or take our now conference break, conference session break. In about two and a half hours, um, we will continue. But you can take the time and scroll through the exhibition and meet the experts there. That's why we are here taking your questions and answering as many of them as possible. So uh, for now, thank you, Oliver, once again for jumping in and take care and see you soon.